Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the Motherland Experience. It's your girl Nye here and today I'm going to take you on a journey from Ghana to the UK and back to Ghana again. I'm going to be sitting down and chatting with a lovely gentleman named Kelly as he's going to describe his experience leaving Ghana at the age of 20. Yes, 20. That was a very long time ago and him going to the UK. It's going to be dynamic, full of lots of information and just his experiences that trust me, you do not want to miss. So sit back, relax and let me take you for a ride. sitting here with this lovely gentleman or chap as they say in the UK. <laughs> he is just so awesome. So you guys please help me welcome Mr. Kelly to the show. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for coming on the channel. It's really an honor. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> I'm looking forward to interviewing you. You want to know why? Um, well, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know, guys. I'm looking forward because you have such an amazing story. And okay. I feel you have so much to share with our lovely viewers. So, to start off with, can you tell us where you are from? Okay, <laughs> so um, I will describe myself um, as someone from the motherland. Um, and when I say motherland, I'm talking about Africa as a whole. Um, and also particularly West Africa mm. where I grew up and uh, I really you know cherish the culture that we have here mm. uh, and particularly Ghana where, where I've got quite a, a deep roots mm -hmm. uh, and and, uh, and I cherish this country so much uh, and I love it I, I, I love being here uh, anytime mm -hmm. and I look forward to the day that I can permanently relocate and come in and come and live here and just live here and just yeah, chill and absolutely. get away from the west and come back to your home country that's right home yeah that's oh, right that's, that's right. beautiful that's beautiful that's right. so can you please tell us kind of why you know kind of your journey in terms of in terms of you being from Ghana and then you traveling to the UK um so um I think um when it comes to um yeah I, I think um being been here for about 20 years mm -hmm. um you know particularly uh, if I want to focus on you know my aspects you know here in in, in Ghana mm -hmm. um and then being part of the school system yeah. Uh, and also knowing the different cultures that exist mm -hmm. uh, in Ghana uh, and also, you know, having the dream of being able to travel one day. Exactly. Um, uh, and then all, all those, you know, uh, coming to fusion, you know, uh, eventually along, along the journey. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so uh, I think, um, you know, also being in the West for, let's say, I think I've now been in the West longer than I've been in, you know, I, I've, I've been in Africa as a whole. So, wow. uh, so I, I was here until maybe about uh, 20 years mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually I, I, I traveled out and now I've been away for 20, 25 years. So yeah, Ooh. so that's telling my age. Oh, um, but, well, listen, you look great. You look great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell from the gray hairs. Yeah. You look fabulous. So Thank kind you. of, that's so interesting because you left at a very young age. So how was that for you, leaving Ghana, going to the UK? How was it in terms of culturally and... Um, yeah, I, I, I think, um, I, I mean, culturally, Mm, was my expectations the same? No, I think most of the time when you're when when you're in Africa, you actually have a different view of the West, right? right. Um, and some of the ways in which you actually encapsulate your your vision or how the West is going to be like when you travel mm -hmm. is by watching movies and you see all the yeah. nice big houses right. Media everything telling you, else. Yeah. and then and then you, you travel out thinking that yeah it's going to be like a luxury life and everything else <laughs> mm -hmm. but you you go there and you find out that it's a whole complete new world mm -hmm. it's a whole complete new system and it's something that you need to really like you know take your time uh, and and adjust to the conditions and adjust mm -hmm. to you know, even to their accent, being able to understand what people are saying, how they mm. communicate, uh, and 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 all of that. So I think uh, it's it's quite a, it's quite a vast difference uh, when you go. It, it can be a bit of a, a culture shock. 
um, mm -hmm. not to talk about the weather, right? You go to the right, UK. Right, because it's really cold. Yeah. Like here it's hot and kind of yeah. more tropical. Yeah. There it's like cold. That's mm -hmm. right, yeah. In, in, in the UK, for instance, they, you know, it's one of the nations that you can get three seasons in one day, right? The sun right. is out in the morning. You think, oh, it's so good. Let me pull my T-shirt. You get right. out there and you're thinking, oh, no, I got my T-shirt. It's a bit chilly. <laughs> yeah. And by yeah. the time you get out, the rain is out already and, and then you're getting wet, you know. So you can mm. have three seasons in a day. So, I mean, those are some of the, you know, so, some of the changes that I encountered. Uh, but mm -hmm. apart from that, I think, um, you know, uh, it, it's an amazing place to live. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing place to encounter. Uh, and it's been able to actually, you know, um, embrace it. Right. Right. Yeah. Because right. I think for you to thrive anywhere in the world, you need to, first of all, understand what the people are like. Yes. And you need to have a heart that's ready to embrace the culture in which you're actually, you know, immersing yourself into. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Well, you know, I've wondered this about people from the continent moving to the West, because you know, the rest has a lot of racism. So how yes. was it, is you coming as a black man, a 20 year old black man, yeah. going into that type of environment in England? Um, I was very naive about the level of racism when I went, um, or when I actually went to uh, the UK. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, around that time we had there, uh, um, you know, a landmark, you know, a murder case that was being solved, which is the Stephen Lawrence uh, inquiry Ooh. that was in, in play at the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't live too far from where he, he was stabbed, you know, so wow. I, I, you know, so um, it was something that I, I, I came to, you know, uh, know very quickly. Right. right. Um, but what I say, you know, I don't think it's out and out racist. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, 25 years ago, you know, it, now it's a lot better. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think the British culture is such a way that it's respectful. Mm -hmm. So that even though um, there might be those, you know, attitudes, mm -hmm. um, they, it is actually, you know, um, submerged in a way. So mm -hmm. until you encounter somebody or have an issue with someone specifically, mm -hmm. you might not have uh, those, uh, you know, you, you might not, you might not notice it as much. Uh, mm, but unfortunately, okay. it, it does exist. Yeah. Um, but does it mean that we cannot thrive in that environment? I think, you know, we, we all do our best to thrive in. I mean, I think we, mm -hmm. you know, um, as a as a continent, mm -hmm. we have something a tenacity within us that yes. is able to, um, mm -hmm. you know, fight or beat, you know, anything, any challenge that comes our way, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I think you need to be dynamic in a way to find a way to thrive. Um, but then there are also so many lovely people. Right. I know you've yeah. met like some really lovely people. Yeah, huh? it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, you know, I lived in London uh, mm -hmm. to, to start with. I was in London for uh, over 13 years uh, before I relocated to the Midlands. Mm -hmm. uh, and in London, uh, it's, it's, it's the most multicultural, you know, city you're going to actually encounter. That's what I've um, heard. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and you see, you know, multicultural people living together side by side mm -hmm. in complete harmony. Oh, that's right. beautiful. So being, being, being in Ghana, mm -hmm. um, being in West Africa, I've had people just like myself, right? Uh, but then you go to the West and then mm -hmm. you can have white friends. You have, you know, went to university predominantly, mm -hmm. you know, I had most of my friends in university were white. Mm -hmm. um, and then also college and, you know, in the wet place and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I've got some amazing uh, great friends uh, that are lovely, but not the same skin color as I am. Right. You know, Asians, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, people from England and other parts of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then, yeah, and then, and then blacks, both from the Caribbean and also from uh, mainland Africa. And those mm -hmm. that probably never traveled, but they born, bred, and, and always lived in the UK. Right. So it's kind of like yeah. a melting pot. It, like it is. Cultures. Yeah. It's, it's a very good mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. nice. So kind of with you going back to you saying that you were in university, what did you study? Uh, I studied building engineering. Oh, yeah. So I okay. went to University of Westminster mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I studied building engineering. I did a, a part-time degree for five years um, mm -hmm. and, and it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. I'm yeah. sure. Can you remember like one of the best memories of you being in a university? there um i think i probably didn't have some of the best university life as uh -huh. you put it oh, okay um, and i think one of the key reasons was because i did my university part-time so i wasn't on campus oh. uh, and because i wasn't in, on campus i don't have that kind of party mm -hmm. life and all that kind of stuff but again <laughs> i i subscribe to the you know to the christian uh, mm -hmm. worldview so yeah. uh, i i lived you know more or less um, you know uh, as, as a christian uh, born again 
mm. uh, and that is something I hold dearly to and that's what shapes the way I live my life mm -hmm. uh, so I don't have any radical wild uh, right uh, university like turn up turn up no no no, the turn no, up no. King, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 oh well that's yeah. you know that's nice that you went there and you study kind of like your passion yes and you really made looks like you made a go of it you really did yes mm. yes I think so and and it comes back to the mentality that sometimes you need to go with right because mm -hmm. again um, when you're not from a particular, a particular culture mm -hmm. and you want to immense yourself into that culture, you mm -hmm. need to make sure that you're at the top of your game. Right? right. So when you, when you go, you want to be the best at what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to be on the top of the pack. Um, and if you're colored and you want to be that, then effectively you need to make sure that you're not being average. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. that's some of the mentality that we, we put on. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's essential for us to do that. And again, it enables all your God given talents to be you know, enhanced right, to and to utilize and yeah, yeah. And, and to come on. I think um, it's been a blessing. Yeah, a blessing that's a major blessing, you know, kind of yeah. when you, you don't even realize something that you have in yourself. That's like right. a talent, but you're kind of pushed yeah. into it, yeah. you know, so yeah. that's, that's a, that's yeah. a big blessing. It really yeah. is. I have a question kind of with you being from like Ghana, Ghana being um, colonized by the British. Yeah. Do you see any similarities between Ghana Ghanaian culture and British culture? Similarities. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I don't think I, I can point out, you know, clear similarities. But mm -hmm. one of the things I can probably say is, you know, in Africa, I think Ghana is one of the countries that's got a very great customer service, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, uh, to people that come from the West. Yeah, and I think yeah. that is something that has transpired over the period where people have been exposed to some of the Western culture mm. uh, and that has been able to enable us to be able to cater uh, mm. for some of those needs. So for those that you know want to travel to Ghana, I think, again, we, we have got a custom and the understanding of what is expected. Mm. Uh, and I think that's one, one of the key things. So I think when it comes to UK, Mm -hmm. uh, service is one of the best, I think, you know, in the world, uh, mm -hmm. providing, you know, service. Mm -hmm. And I think when it comes to Africa as a whole, I think Ghana is one of the countries that I would say will lead in the way uh, when, it to, yeah, way. when it comes to providing, to providing customer, customer service. service yeah. Come to Ghana. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So kind of with you coming back, you know, yeah. you've, it's been a long time since you've left and you're coming back to Ghana, kind of. What is your opinion about the evolution? What has it been like seeing wow. Ghana now? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I remember, um, uh, so going to the UK um, in, you know, le the late uh, uh, 90s mm -hmm. um, and then not coming back to, you know, coming, you know, coming to, you know, Africa at all. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, <laughs> after 16 years. Wow. And to me, that was a culture shock. I'm sure. In right. what way? Uh, it was a culture shock in the sense that um, I don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but again, I had some encounter with, you know, being stopped by the police while I was driving with my cousin. Mm. Uh, and I wasn't familiar with, you know, actually being able to handle, you know, that scenario. Yeah. Uh, and what they were expecting and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And, and there is a different, there is a different mentality you know yeah. uh, when it comes to so it's just it's just all of those things um and i think the other thing again is you know uh, in the uk we like everything fast face even right. our, even, even exactly. talking mm -hmm. yeah. talking really fast and yeah. it's kind of on a different type of schedule efficiency in yeah. the west yes yeah. yes yes yeah. yes yes, <laughs> yes. I, I remember i mean sometimes it's like the talking is even slow motion <laughs> You know, <laughs> talking in slow motion. Slow motion, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I remember calling. Uh, I remember calling the landline one day. One of the ladies that helped her around the house. I mm -hmm. uh, picked up the phone. He said, "Okay, okay. What is your name? Mm -hmm. um, okay, who do you want to speak to?" I'm thinking. Do you know what? Can we be a bit quicker? Can than we that? be a little bit quicker? Just pick up the pace, just yeah, a little bit so, for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. it can be a culture yeah. shock. It yeah, really so can. I think, I think, yeah, <laughs> I think it was those things, and mm -hmm. it, it just going into the market areas, and I'm thinking, would I be able to fit into this society? And my mm. my first response was no, right? Um, because I've been away so much, and most mm -hmm. of my adult life has been away from here. Exactly. Um, so effectively, it was something that I thought. Do you know what? Mm -hmm. 
it might be, you know, um, mm. it might be difficult to settle in. But then I kept, I kept visiting and that was a great thing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I kept visiting, I kept coming, coming time after time. Mm. And as I kept coming, I, I got familiar with how things work here. Right. Uh, and I think that was one of the things that are really great. And I think a lot of people make mistakes that they could actually move here and they can just do things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, over the period of time, I was able to start getting my feet, getting to understand the culture, get to mm -hmm. understand how the system works, mm -hmm. get to understand how different people are like. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll be able to work out a framework in which you can actually fit within the system mm -hmm. and make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. everyone is different. Exactly, you know, yeah. exactly. Well, yeah. like you said, it's a, it can be a big culture shock and you were gone for so long. Yeah. So kind of fitting into, you know, certain things here. It's yeah. like, wow, because 2020, that's very young. So I yeah. could definitely understand that, right. you know, but segueing from that, I think that your story is really beautiful, even yeah. how it ties in to land at Gray City. For those of you that don't know, he's been a part of the Royal Kingdom Estates family for a long time, yes. almost ever since the beginning. And he has land in Grace City, but that land holds a sentimental value for you. So can you please share? Okay, yeah. So effectively, um, my, my, my mom's mom mm -hmm. actually comes from uh, Insachi, right? Insachi. Insachi is a town <laughs> that's not far from Grace City, where Grace mm -hmm. is located. So effectively, um, you know, it, it was it, it was amazing uh -huh. uh, that they they I think it was the second time that I actually came uh, uh -huh. to uh, to Grace City uh, uh -huh. that my grandma had passed away at the time. Uh -huh. um, so uh, and effectively, it was just a stone throw just down the road uh, uh -huh. from where Grace City was. Uh -huh. So to me, um, it's like coming home, right? right. Uh, and gr my grandmother is one of my dearest cherished, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, people in the world, you know, and, and I love Aww. this so much. Uh, and effectively, you know, um, that, that, you know, so if it, it feels like Grace City is part of my, of my entire story. Uh, and yeah. and it's, it's part so close to my grandmother, close to where she's buried, close to where, you know, um, yeah, where I've visited it and mm. been with her in the past. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's been a, it's been an amazing experience. See, yeah. Isn't it funny how the most side works things? It's, yes. You know, you were able to kind of even though she's passed on, it's like she's watching over you and yeah. and and you know with you being in the same vicinity and area yes. of yes. you know kind of your childhood memories yes. and everything. Yes. I I think that that's that that's beautiful. Yeah, I really do. I think that that's beautiful. So yeah. it was almost yeah. Grace City was calling you in a way. Um, Would you yeah, say that? Yeah. So, I mean, when, when I, one of the aspects of my journey that I think also, you know, um, probably sits well with some of our viewers that are probably thinking mm -hmm. about, you know, um, making a move, uh, yeah. for instance. Um, so, again, I, I wanted to establish business here, mm -hmm. right? And, and again, you know, you, you, you make decisions about where you want to establish yourself in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are other parts, you know, um, you know uh, of, of, of this continent, you know. One of the places I even thought of was Sierra Leone, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, so again, roots, are, you know, within, within, you know, within, within a motherland mm -hmm. that I thought wanted to do something, right? Yeah. Uh, but then again, because my grandmother was living here, I came here a lot more, right? Right. right. Uh, and that gave me that that route. Mm -hmm. And being able to come, I was able to see the different opportunities and how, how that fitted into what I wanted to achieve, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when it comes to real estate, civil engineering building, mm -hmm. generally, like I said before, I wanted to be in the real estate, right? And mm -hmm. I think Ghana is leading the way when it comes to that. It right? is. It's one of Ghana the prime is. places to buy land. Mm -hmm. It's growing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, it's finding credible ways in which you, you want to do that. Right, right. Yeah. right. So exactly. again, it's uh, being able to, you know, meet up with the right people, the right, mm -hmm. you know, mindsets mm -hmm. uh, that you can actually work with mm -hmm. uh, that can help you, you know, establish, you know, uh, you know, something that will help you know your stay here sustainable mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. uh, so some of the businesses that you know I, i've even thought about is some of the business that will actually support people from the diaspora right mm. when they come mm -hmm. where are they going to stay yeah how do they, big. <laughs> exactly yeah. you know how are they going to integrate into the system mm -hmm. you know how do they find their roots as to what are the you know what are the places to go where are the places to chill out mm -hmm. um if they want a business where do you open the business you know mm -hmm. how do you actually you know go about getting all of those things done uh, yeah. and i think you know with what we do we interact mm -hmm. with a lot of people that come from the west yeah. uh, and again this this is some of the things that we want to do to support people in the diaspora uh, and mm -hmm. I think some of these interviews that 
you've been doing on the channel mm. uh, is some of, some of the education uh, yeah. that quite a number of our, our mm. viewers, you know, see and then, you know, draws them into. Exactly, you know, uh, exactly. into this environment and, mm. and yeah help yeah. them to, to settle yeah, yeah, we'll settle yeah. So you're doing a great job <laughs> oh oh well to the most high be the glory you yes. know and it takes people like you to tell their story yeah. and to really open up and express themselves yeah. you know so i it, i really feel that we have a job to do is people coming from Absolutely. the diaspora for others to be that linking point That's to correct. the continent, change the narrative, That's correct. you know, kind of bring That's another correct. awareness yeah. to the continent as a whole. But since yeah. we're here in Ghana, to Ghana. Yeah. So yeah. one, my last and final question for you, Kelly, yeah. is what advice would you have for, you know, your fellow Ghanaian brothers and sisters that are looking to travel to the West, especially to the UK, since yeah, you okay. in the UK, what advice would you give them? Yeah, um, I think, um, First of all, um, yeah, just just find good contacts. Mm -hmm. You know, find good contacts. Come with a completely open mind. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, you know, if you're subscribed to this channel, then that's the best place to start. Mm -hmm. Look at look at the you know motherland series. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the experience that other people have had, uh, and then learn from some of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we also need to understand that some of those experiences are peculiar to people. Right. right, exactly. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's not always going to be positive mm -hmm. uh, and it's not always going to be negative, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but the truth is, you can you make life work in Ghana? Absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most beautiful countries in the world to live in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but again, you need to come and you need to make those contacts and you need to come with an open mind. That's the first thing you need to come with, mm -hmm. with an open, open mind, mind, steady how people are alike. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then ask questions and then, yeah, find your feet. Mm -hmm. and then take it step by step uh, and i and i don't i mean i'm somebody that loves to travel a lot all right mm -hmm. um so i've been to maybe nine caribbean islands wow right? so yeah so uh, yeah I, I love yeah what caribbean islands have you been to uh, well, a number of them i've been <laughs> i've been to um antigua i've been mm -hmm. to aruba i've been to st case i've been to wow. curacao i've been to uh, barbados i've been to oh. uh, um uh, grenada I've been to so there's been a quite a number of wow. uh, islands that I've visited to, and and there are people just like us, right? Exactly. You know, and, and again, sometimes when they I have a friend um, mm. whose dad told him that I'm going to the motherland, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and he thought it was going back to the Caribbean, but he came to Africa, <laughs> right? Yeah. So he said, okay, yeah. when he said motherland, I thought mm -hmm. you're just going back home to you know to the Caribbean, but exactly. you actually so again we've got other brothers and sisters in the Caribbean. Oh yeah, um, we're you know, all over. Who, you know, so mm -hmm. all of them. So it's not just you know, Ghanaians and Sierra Leoneans mm -hmm. and Nigerians or uh, anyone else, but even even our, our brothers, our black American that have never been anywhere else, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our black British folks that have never been anywhere else that want to find their roots. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've got a system of being able to find your DNA and I think a lot of people are oh, tracing yeah. back, you know, to Ghana and other places because unfortunately, um, you know, you can talk about the slave trade, right, you know, and, right. and all, all those things that happened. Mm -hmm. And those things are in the past, you know, and I think um, we need to come to a place where we recognize that, mm -hmm. you know, those that did that are no longer here right, right everybody and we're getting here on. to mm -hmm. change the narrative mm -hmm. uh, and we've got amazing you know white folks that have made this place their home mm -hmm. and we embrace them uh, right. we've got amazing you know black people that made their home mm -hmm. abroad like i have done and, exactly. and there are a lot of people that embrace me mm -hmm. so i think we we need to come and, and you know we need yeah we need to change the narrative and say that it's a wonderful country. It's a wonderful place. Wonderful food. Wonderful people. <laughs> wonderful customer service. Wonderful houses. Just all amazing. that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know. So yeah, come with an open mind. Yeah. Uh, let your next holiday destination be Ghana. Ah, oh, I love it. Yes. I mean, you summed it up perfectly, Kelly. Thank you. you really, really did. Oh <laughs> my you. gosh, this conversation yeah. has been awesome. Thank yeah. you so so much Amazing. we really appreciate you. you and thank you guys for tuning in and please do not forget to like comment subscribe and share this information with others until next time bye, bye.